Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Black Beauty, according to Spike Milligan. So this is basically British humorist Spike Milligan's retelling of Black Beauty in his own inimitable voice. Uh, the best way to give you a feel for it is to read out some of the tabs that I've put throughout this. So we're going to go and jump on in. Uh, first I will read you the blurb though, which is essentially actually just... Uh, yeah, okay. Well we've got a sample on the back and then a blurb, so I'll read the sample. Next was to break me to harness. First, a stiff, heavy collar on my neck. Then there was a bridle with great side pieces called blinkers against my eyes. Then there was a small saddle strap that went under my tail. That was the crapper. I hated it. It stopped me having a crap. I never felt more like kicking, so I kicked him in the ghoulies and they swelled up like watermelons. He had to put the harness on me while balancing his balls with one hand and could only move very slowly. In time, I got used to everything and he got used to swollen balls and I could do my work as well as my mother. I used to wash up after dinner. Yes, I was a very good horse. So here's the blurb. Uh, the legend of Black Beauty is spawned, if a horse can be said to spawn, it's more of a frog thing really, a great many horsey tales on film, television and in print, but even Anna Sewell's original classic adventure failed to tell it like it really is. Here, straight from the horse's mouth, is Black Beauty according to Spike Milligan, revealing what it's like to be a young foal. As soon as I was old enough to eat grass, my mother used to stuff it down my throat until it kept coming out the back, or to be sold by a beloved master. I could not say goodbye, so I put my nose in his hand and bit off a finger. Or to be out in freezing cold weather. The horses all felt it very much. I felt mine and it was frosty. Spike canters through this latest volume in his best-selling According To series with a bawdy irreverence and adds a unique element by introducing each chapter with a new poem. As befits a tale of earthy horsey folk, earthy horsey strong language is used. So one of the horse gets a name which is a racial slur that begins with N, that's all I'm going to say about that. Very, uh, very Spike Milligan. So we have these couple paragraphs here I want to read. Uh, these uh, ad adjectives are kind of annoying, but hey ho. <laughs> no sir, he always takes the horses in with him. I will say this sir, that a steadier, pleasanter, honester, smarter young fellow I never had. I can trust his word and I can trust his work. Perhaps he does a pee when I'm not looking. I know those people in laced hats and liveries. But whoever wants, I know those people in laced hats and liveries. But whoever wants a character of James Howard, let them come to John Manley. He really was an arse licker. The old bastard had tried to find out if the young lad had ever committed something unusual, like wanking. How unusual. Thought this was just an interesting... This, this bit amused me. Uh, I, heard a soft, I heard a soft rushing sort of noise. I discovered it was coming out of me. And then I heard a low crackling and snapping. I did not know what it was, but a horse doesn't know everything. A horse does not know that Leonidas and his Spartans held the pass at Thermopylae against the Persian hordes. Here we have a great example of the kind of wit that uh, Milligan's known for. Um, we were lifted off our legs and swung to the deck of the great vessel. Then we were placed in small close stools and never for a long time saw the sky or were able to stretch our legs. Somehow I managed to stretch mine an extra three inches. We, here we learn about a coarse soldier entertainment. The man must have been doing the white-eared elephant, as his trouser pockets were pulled inside out, his flies were open, and his willy was hanging out. Here we have at the start of chapter 48, they're very short chapters. It's chapter 48, page 134. At this sale, of course, I found myself in company with old broken down dying horses, some lame, some broken winded, some in wheelchairs going on 80. There were, there were poor men trying to sell a dead horse for threepence to the Pal Dog Food Company. Some of them looked as if they'd seen hard times. The hardest times were from midnight to six o'clock in the morning. I agree with that. Let me get, so the boy looked at my nostrils and ears in the shape of my neck and shoulder. Could not you buy him and make him young again? My dear boy, I can't make old horses young. This one is knackered. He was wrong. I had never been knackered. I still had a complete set. So as you can tell, there's a certain type of humor prevailing throughout this. Um, it's not, as you can see from the fact that he uses an M-bomb in here, necessarily politically correct anymore. But it is fairly humorous. I mean, Spike uh, Milligan was one of the founding members of the, the Goon Show. Uh, and I do tend to enjoy his work. You just have to sort of take it with a pinch of salt. This one, you're probably not really going to want to read unless you're a fan of either Spike Milligan or Black Beauty. And I, I think both are, you know, all right to good. So I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Black Beauty according to Spike Milligan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.